Hi everyone, it's Angela Clark from Thug Lego Quilting and APQS Raleigh again. And this time I'm gonna to talk to you about the inside of your quilt path carriage. So I have my carriage flipped upside down. Um, normally it would be solid, which you would see underneath the long arm. Um, so this is visible from the bottom side of your system. Um, and at the end of the, the uh, video, I will flip this over so you it's in the relationship you would normally see it in. Um, but we wanna talk about what's inside it. So I have it flipped over so that we can see what's inside. I'm gonna start up here at the front of your carriage. Um, this is the motor. It looks just like the motor that's outside the carriage. There's actually two connectors on it, just like um, we saw on our other motor, um, one of which is hardwired. It's this black wire. And then you can see this little putty colored wire running up here. Um, that is like an old fashioned telephone wire. Okay, so, and it clips in to this side right here. Um, the other one has, um, is direct wired all the way back to here. Okay, so this is actually the wire coming off of the motor right here. When you're working back from the front of your carriage, this is your axle. In this case, this, this carriage is blissed. So this is a bliss axle. When you have bliss, if you ever have your carriage upside down, there's gonna be two ball bearings, two right here, two sets, sorry, and then two right on the other side. Um, when your carriage is upside down, it's a great time to clean those with a little isopropyl alcohol and make sure there's no fluffies or nasties in there. Um, this is actually a relatively new carriage, so our axle, um, so there's not um, anything in there. It hasn't had any time to build up. But there's times that you'll, when you flip it over, it'll actually look like there's a little felt pad around them. You want to get those off of there. That's no fun, okay? And then as we work back, this next thing, this little black box, is all this is is a power adapter. It says on here, AC-DC adapter. It, yours may be different. Um, it just kind of depends on what generation, when your system was made. It's basically a laptop power brick. So they're all different sizes inside the carriages. They're gonna glow different colors. So you can see I have a little indicator right here on this particular model. Um, it's not plugged in, so you can't see the light. But there's times that we're gonna have you look up inside your carriage and see if you have power. We wanna know if this has power, okay? If we don't see a light anywhere glowing anywhere on this box, then your controller, which is your little mini computer inside your carriage will not have power either. Okay, so AC adapter, when it's plugged in and you have power going to your system, it needs to have a light on it, okay? We're gonna keep working back towards the back of the carriage and you are either going to have a silver box like this in your carriage or you're gonna have a box that's about the same size and is black. Now we've had two different type controllers. This is the newer version of our controller. Um, and this, so if you have a silver box, um, your, your system is probably a 2017 or newer. Um, 2017, 2018, somewhere in that range, we switched to this style of controller. Before that, it would have been a black box. So those of you that just did your update to version four, some of you were told that you needed to find a serial number and then you had to poke into this little hole right here. That's where the firmware update is done on the newer controllers, right? If you didn't, you have a hole on the side of your machine. This one still actually is old enough that it has the hole on the side as well. It's got a cover in it on this side. So some of you had to access through the side. If you access through the side to do your firmware update, you have got a black box inside your system. They both work well. Um, just different generations, right? This is an upgraded um, board. So you wanna think of this, this is actually the brains of your quilt path. It is another computer. It's a software board that has programmable logic inside of it. That's what firmware is. And when um, there's times that it's having a problem, right? You need to make sure you turn your carriage off. Like if your um, system has locked and the release carriage does not make that go away, that means this is still telling Quilt Path, stay locked, right? It's locking the carriage. And to reset that, there's a, it's a couple software ways we can do it too. If we try those though, and they don't work, we would have you turn the power off back on the back of your carriage. 
and that will reset this little computer, okay? Um, so with the newer one, I'm gonna try to get some pictures of the older one. Both of the boxes I have are silver, so it's not real helpful. I can't show you where things are plugged in on that one. Um, but what I want you to notice with the silver one, if you do have one, is that there are color codes here. The wires themselves are the same. The little connectors, if I unplug them, these two would both be the same. But one one of the wires is painted yellow and the other one is not. The Anything that is yellow going into this box is the Y axis or the carriage axis, meaning that this is the communication from the motor, right? From that little putty wire coming back, it goes into this one. And then this black cable is that black hardwired wire coming back. They're both yellow, okay? The ones that are not yellow are is the information coming in from my right leg motor, okay? I don't really expect you guys to remember all of this. Um, this is gonna be, if we're on a phone call, we're gonna start talking about, um, sometimes we have you switch those so that we can get things to reverse what they're doing to see if it will reverse for us. Okay, so I just kind of want you to know what this does. Things like the power button back here are actually siliconed in place so that they can't back out on you. Um, this cable that's going in right here is actually your stitch regulation. It's coming in. And I say that and then I'm looking back going, hmm. This is actually coming in from your aux. This is the red wire coming in, I'm sorry. Stitch regulators farther back. So this is the information coming in from your machine um, that we call the red cable or the aux, A-U-X cable. So it's telling this board if your needle is up, right? If your stitch regulator is on, okay? So it's things, communications from the long arm itself. And then the one that most of you are gonna need to know eventually is this flat one here. On this dial controller, this is your USB cable. If you have that black box, it sits in here dial diagonally. It's kind of canted inside the carriage. There are two little flat white connectors up here and your USB connector is back here, okay? And it's actually a very special right angle USB connection. So the actual connector itself is a right angle going into back here. So if you ever need to find your USB connector on your controller, it's gonna be back in this back corner, okay? So towards the back, when you're looking at it from the bottom, um, and actually I think the, the USB connector may be on this side, on the black ones, because when you're looking at it from the bottom, um, and you've got your head at the top, it's on your right hand for the black one, so it's actually canted in the opposite direction. But you're gonna know because it's gonna be, you're gonna have a little space. Not a whole lot of space, not enough for your fingers, but you're gonna have a little space back there, okay? Um, so then if we keep working back, looking at the inside of our carriage, I'm gonna see if I can balance this over here. Um, this right here, this whole unit, is your stitch regulator. So this is the black, Ball, the black, the back or the rear axle of your stitch regulator. This ball bearing is gonna ride on your dowel rod, that metal rod that runs the entire length of your rails. Um, and it's what makes it move so smooth because it's metal on metal. It's a, roll, a metal ball bearing rolling on metal. Um, so this is your stitch regulator, okay? And then I'm gonna try to get it a little bit farther over and hopefully not drop this. We're gonna be talking about this box back here. Um, actually, I have someone holding the other end for me now. So my helper would like to be known as um, Thing. So just so that you know, he's my hand model. So um, this five plate, um, this, this is a face plate, right? It looks different on different versions of the machine. We've changed it that I know of three or four times, um, and it just depends on what we can get our hands on at any given moment. Um, so you're gonna have this weird white connector that you've probably never seen anywhere other than an APQS machine. That's something called a Molex connector. Um, that is the communication coming in from your motor, okay? It's the hardwired uh, cable that's about six inches long and then it has a little another little white connector, right? The other end of that cable plugs into here. This white um, port 
is for communications from the like the putty wire coming out of your right motor leg. So these correspond to the same thing on that carriage motor we were talking about, black wire, putty wire, right? The black wire here um, it is, and my mind just went completely blank. It's your stitch regulator. That's why I can't figure out what it is. This is communication for your stitch regulator going back up into your machine. And then the red port is for the aux cable. We tried to mark them the same as the color of the wire so that you could tell what you're doing. Red goes into red and anything external, any wiring external um, that go talks to the aux is a red cable. Okay. And then this long skinny one, that's your USB port. So it's the other, another place that we are concerned with if you can't connect. So we would be playing with this and seeing if we plugged it in tighter, if we wiggle it, things like that, if we can get it to communicate. Now the fun part about this, if I turn this so that you can kind of see inside, I've un there's two screws that hold this faceplate on. On the back of this are more connectors. Like if I unplug this one, that's a USB connector too. So when you're getting a cannot connect and we're asking you if you're testing connections, you need to take the faceplate off and play with, you know, unplug the ones on the back too. Just be really, really careful because this white one, everything's hardwired. It doesn't unplug from the back of the, the Molex connector. Everything else, you can see the same type plug going into the back of those ports too. Okay, they're just little jumper ports so that we can make your system look nice and clean. And then once you make sure it's all plugged in tight, I'm gonna make sure that USB went all the way back. You would just push it down and screw this back in. Okay, so you sometimes do have to go into that one. Make sure you turn the power off first. We don't want anything to happen to you, right? But unscrew it, make sure everything's plugged in, put it right back on again. And then the last part of your carriage, we're gonna need to go forward just a little bit more so we can see it and I'm gonna have him angle it up, is your power, right? Um, this, when you, it's just like a, a power plug that would go under your CPU. This is supplying the power. It's the one that has the fuse drawer on it. So this is incoming power and this is outgoing power to your long arm. Okay, so this is gonna power your long arm. This is actually powering the entire system. So all of the electrical comes through this, goes in through a little transfer box and then power goes this direction to power that AC adapter, and then the outgoing power to power your long arm is coming out of here. So there is this little clip that you wanna make sure is clipped onto your cord so that it, it can't come um, unplugged while you're quilting. One of the main things that we see with cannot connect is that this light switch back here is not glowing red, meaning that it's not turned on. It's not plugged in right now, um, but you'll see me every once in a while ask somebody, is your switch on the back glowing red because if you're like me you just flip the switch and keep going and I don't typically look at it so you want to make sure you do look at it if you're having a can cannot connect and make sure you're flipping it in the right direction believe it or not that is the number one cause of a cannot connect error is it not being plugged in okay okay so that's really all there is about the carriage to put the carriage on the system we're just going to flip it over it's going to hook on at a 95 a 45 degree angle, and this is what you would normally see. I don't have it actually hooked on all the way, there we go. But it would roll back and forth. So your long arm, it's gonna be solid underneath your long arm. Everything we were looking at it, when we're doing diagnostic, we are laying on the floor looking up, okay? So I hope you've been enjoying the videos. This is gonna be the last one for today. Um, we're gonna decide what we're gonna do tomorrow and um, give you a little bit of warning in advance when we're going to do it. Um, thank you guys all for logging in. I really appreciate it and I will see you later.